Hey everybody, I want to talk about a product and platform that I absolutely love and our latest sponsor, Interseller, the prospecting and outreach platform of choice for recruiters and sellers. Whether you're doubling down on business development or recruiting talent, Interseller does all the heavy lifting of finding contact data, automating the email and follow-up process, and syncs all that rich data into 20 plus CRM and ATS platforms. Reach out now and get going on a two-week free trial and let them know you heard about it from Adam on the podcast today. Check out the link on the website. Appreciate it. Welcome to the podcast, where we introduce you to incredible humans who share their journeys with the mission to inspire you to harness your own inner tenacity to drive your life and career forward. And now, your host, Adam Posner. Welcome back, everyone, to the Immutable Mindset and the podcast for a simulcast today. Today's guest is Charles Stanton, the Chief Marketing Officer at Forge, a company at the bleeding edge of NFT technology, championing the transition of audiences into the Web3 space. Starting from a strong marketing background in the UK, Charles led digital campaigns for some of the biggest brands, including KPMG, the National Lottery, BUPA and British Gas. His innovative efforts in the realm of social media marketing have been recognized with multiple awards, highlighting his ability to connect audiences with brands in new and powerful ways. But his career took a fascinating turn when he dove headfirst into the world of Web3 and the metaverse. Now at Forge, Charles applies his marketing acumen to forge new pathways for creators and fans in the world of digital collectibles, gaming, music, and entertainment. He believes in co-creation and the power of brands as gateways into the metaverse, and most importantly, and the democratization of creativity. Whether it's partnering with Polygon, Crust, or Anchor, or working on interactive experiences like the Monkeying Around project with the Board Ape IP, Charles and his team are shaping the future of how we interact with brands, art, and each other in the metaverse. Today, we'll dive deep into Charles's journey, his role at Forge, the concepts of the metaverse, and the future of Web3. Prepare to have those horizons expanded and for your understanding of the digital realm deepen. So without further ado, Let's give a warm, immutable mindset welcome to the man who's truly forging a path into the metaverse, Mr. Charles Chaz Stanton. Wow, 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 wow. Guys, I, I have, I have never <laughs> in, all my, in all my life had such a great intro. Thank you so much. I'm, I, I'm, I'm almost certainly never going to live up to those expectations, but, we'll uh, but yeah, thank you for having me. I'm honestly, I'm, I'm, so, uh, I'm so jacked to be here. It's fantastic. Thanks, thanks for coming on board, man. We know it's late on a Friday afternoon over in the UK, and we're probably the last thing you want to be doing today, but thank you. So let, <laughs> let's, let's get to it. You're, you're in good hands here with Kevin and Adam. Agreed, agreed. And absolutely, always, always love to edify those that are, are truly building and are truly adopting, not you know the next billion, but, but truly on the adoption path for what we're doing here. So really appreciate it. And it's awesome to have you here, Chaz. I'm going to go with Chaz. I like Chaz. So, yeah, oh, let's, awesome. <laughs> let's uh, you know, let's like like most podcasts, of course, start. We have our audience that that wants to know a little more, a little bit more about you. So, can we start with just you know sharing a bit about your background and your career journey leading up to Forge, what was formerly Bondly? Yes, yes, of course. So, so yeah, I've got I've got background, obviously based in the UK. In case my accent didn't give that away, and uh, I've got a, a background across many doing marketing for a lot of big brands in the UK. Um, so, predominantly. My, my career has been centered around social media. So, you know, from back in the day when Twitter was just a, an annoyance for brands, they didn't understand it, didn't want to get into it, and uh, ended up uh, heading up social media for British Gas, which is part of, um, I, I think in America, there's Direct Energy, right, if you've heard it. of that one. So I was, I was on the uh, Centrico graduate scheme and then moved into Bupa, which is a big healthcare company, doing head of, head of social for their global operation, got really fascinated by sort of digital tech and everything else. Moved into the national lottery, so sort of huge opportunity to you know to do these big, broad sort of digital marketing campaigns using social media. And back then, you know, we worked directly with Facebook on launching a, a Facebook Live show. So it's something that hadn't ever been done before. It was like just exploring kind of new ways to interact and build communities. So this is all kind of moving into you know sort of where I ended up. So obviously, we moved to KPMG, head of social media there. You know, uh, another sort of fascinating, just incredible company to work for. But by then, I'd caught the uh, the Web3 bug. And actually, you know, it, it didn't take very long to kind of just dive headfirst in. And I, I actually, uh, much to my wife's 
annoying. So I, I, I quit my job at KPMG within uh, within a few oh. months because I just I just absolutely loved uh, the world of NFTs and and uh, I was actually a, a follower of Bondly at the time. I was in their community, just really loved what the guys were doing. And you know, I basically got headhunted and jumped straight in. I haven't looked back. Basically, Chaz, I, I got I got to ask you this: the three of us are married men, right here. We've all had yes. incredibly interesting conversations Where's with our going? wives when it comes to NFT. For example, when I went to go buy the Captain's Club NFT, if you're familiar, oh. if you're aware, that's Miami. Uh, yeah. this I'm yeah. like, hey, babe, I want to spend $18,000 on a strip club NFT. Oh. That was an interesting conversation. So let me ask you this question, Chaz. When you said KPMG, big four, right? Hey, babe, I'm thinking about leaving because I'm kind of into this NFT Web3. Uh. So how did that conversation go? Please, let's, let's, let's talk about that for a moment. It gets better, Adam. I, I was uh, about, uh, about three months away from having our second baby. Oh, oh on so top of that. Was, yeah, let's, let's layer that on. Yeah. Perfect timing. So it was, yeah, this was perfect time. Exactly. You know, it was, um, you know what? I have to, I have to be honest. I, I'm, I'm very lucky. She, she, I don't think she knows enough about Web3 to realize how stupid a decision same, it was. Same, 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 same. <laughs> same. So just, in, just enough to know just how much. That's the question. How much, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So it's, uh, you know, it was, uh, I was, I was lucky in that, you know, the, uh, the opportunities, you know, were, were great. And I, I think, you know, I quickly proved that it was the right decision to make. It had helped that I made a bit of money. I invested a little bit early in Cardano. And anybody who knows the growth of Cardano oh, between about yeah. 2020, you know, so onwards. Yeah. So it, it kind of meant, you know, no I was kind of, of like, net. yeah, exactly. I was or in a good trampoline, position. trampoline, depending how you look at your circus paraphernalia. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. More of a trapeze. But uh, rope, no, it was... Uh, I don't know. Yes, was there something a sword swallower? I mean, we could, we could, anyway, but obviously, you know, even you know, you're talking about Cardano. You're talking about like the ICO times when, right, when when things were going crazy. Was there, you know, beyond the speculation and the hype of it all, was there was there anything that really like caught you? Like you know, you were talking about you know, you dove into this realm. What what was it that caught your eye first? What was it that captivated you that that made you see that there was something different with Web3? Was there any project in particular, any token? Was it Cardano in particular? Or, or yeah, what was it? And actually, um, more than just speculating, I, I have to say, I really bought into Charles Hoskinson and, and the, the mission of Cardano. And I was really fortunate, actually, that uh, Bonley, people probably forget this because it's been such a long project, but we actually uh, later on partnered with Cardano. It was oh, a huge yeah. opportunity to, to interact with my hero and actually speak to, uh, to the Cardano team uh, we, we're building the official NFT bridge between Cardano and Ethereum. So that's still uh, still ongoing. It's very much still a project that's, that's kind of been built. But I love the mission, the idea of, of democratization, decentralization of finance, right? So and Cardano's angle, if you will, is very much kind of trying to expand that into kind of, well, I say, developing countries. I'm very careful about saying third world, but yeah, developing nations and, and giving people access to financial products that otherwise wouldn't have access to it. And, you know, that really... Yeah, kind of resonated with me, and, and yeah. I just want to jump in here because I'm 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 teeing this up for Kevin. Kevin, quickly chat for a quick second about our experience, your experience, consensus when we when, when it's kind of like all these things coming together about this decentralized global finance. The chat you were having with that gentleman about developing nations. Oh yeah, I mean, you know, well we know, right? That's I think we we always talk about the killer app of of Web three and and the killer app of blockchain. That's the killer app of blockchain, right? the reality, at least for like, just, you know, taking this very deeply. So I'm half Dominican. I have a lot of family in Dominican Republic. We've spent an insurmountable amount of money to just to give them money. It, it takes an insurmountable amount of money and fees. And right, we know this. And, you know, for a lot of these third world countries, a lot of that money goes into fees using Western Union and all these other ones. Mm -hmm. And then there's there's a time like cars, there's a five day things. time yeah. lag and you don't know if the money's going to be there and it's not instantaneous. And it's just it's such a horrible experience for a human being that roams this earth. So to your point. Mm -hmm. It's a tax on the family. I, I don't understand. It's, it's honestly, it's a crime. It really is. So um, I have to say, it's 2023, guys. You know what's going on? You know, Western Union, sort it out, man. Honestly. Let's get this. Let's get this shit together. So I want. I want to. I want to bring it back to the heart of the conversation here. But I think it's important to talk about the rebranding process from Bondly to Forge. What prompted that that action? Yeah. Well, I mean, so Bondly started out as Bondly Finance, yep. uh, and you know. Yeah, so uh, you know the the name Enough Bondi, you know, <laughs> financial connotations. I mean, Bondi was. I, if you guys remember back at that time, Bondi was the the kind of foundational oh, NFT yeah. project. I mean, we were the first, uh, we were the first project to do yep. utility mm -hmm. in NFTs to a big scale, and um, the first NFT launchpad, the first celebrity partnership, and we also you know still very much uh, you know working with Lewis Capaldi as well as sort of first major music artist. 
to do an NFT. And, uh, you know, really, Ford was was kind of the, the next evolution, really, in our journey. We, we uh, as you know, Animoca Brands became a majority owner. So we're now officially a subsidiary of Animoca Brands, which has been just, I have to say, an incredible I love Yacht, experience. I, uh, love, we actually I love Yacht. Have, yeah. Yeah, we've got Yacht on next oh, week awesome. uh, on our on our live stream show to talk about the Open Televator, which, of course, we'll, we'll talk about in a, bit, in a bit, I'm sure. But yeah, you know, part, being part of Animoca Brands, we realized that bonding finance was, it was too restrictive, right? We wanted a brand that resonated yeah. with, I say, Web2 audiences, but, but really kind of resonated with, with the more lifestyle side of NFT technology. And of course, we're moving more into the metaverse, you know, and, and looking at, uh, you know, kind of more community-led activations. You know, bonding finance, just, it felt too kind of decks, you know, kind of, uh, you know, it wasn't really kind of where we were going, really, I think. So it was a great opportunity to kind of, you know, take it to another level and, and with Animoca behind us as well. You know, far more focused around the exciting kind of, you know, kind of more community-based side of, of Web3, which is, like I say, uh, metaverse yeah. NFTs, experiences, yeah, all that, all that lovely, fluffy stuff. Yeah, it feels like, it feels like that's, like, your, your guy's transition feels like almost everybody's transition. Like, it goes from, like, blockchain is just right. a ledger, and then Ethereum, you're like, oh, wait, it's a computer, too, and you can do all these things. So, right, we start with finance, we start as this ledger, and then we're like, oh, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. We can do what with blockchain? And then all of a sudden you can write yes. entertainment and media. And I've heard you talk about that recently. I heard you talk that, you know, what, what you saw was that media was the landscape where Web3 would be this amazing, this amazing app, this amazing use case for people. Could you just, just not, not to take it, but just could you speak on that piece? So for me, this is, this is one of the things that really sort of attracted me to, to Web3 is, is the, the next level ability for brands to engage, right? And you think about, I mean, when people often, you guys will find this as well, you get those who kind of say, look, I don't understand why NFT is any different to, you know, having what I currently have, which is an email address I can, I can log right. into, whatever. And as I keep saying to people, right, that ability to, to truly be identified in a way that you want to be, obviously, by, by owning an asset, right? So I, I own a, a cool cat, right? So that's one of my, uh, my PFPs. I own a cool cat. I am identifying as a member of the cool cat community. I want to be identified in that way. I can use my NFT for a number of different things. I can access a number of different communities who are open to incorporating cool cat holders. I'm using cool cat because I mean the obvious one is bored apes, and, and obviously we are. Cool doing cats are cool. Cats are pretty cool. They're OG. Cool cats. Are, cool cats. Are, cool cats is around before any of the apes. Cool cats, and you can fact check me on this. So I'm pretty sure cool cats around before the punks and the apes. A cool cats have been around a long time. Yeah, absolutely, hundred percent. And also, an Animoca Brands uh, brand now. So uh, another another reason to love them so much. So um, so yeah, no. So the, the point is, you know, that that level uh, that of, of, of interaction between brands and, and fans, you know, that's what that's what Forge is all about. It's that it's that kind of that kind of lovely we call it this connective tissue between between brands and fans that, that previously hasn't been explored to this level. And the idea of fans becoming part of that creative process, right? So actually co-creating with brands and the opportunities there are just are just immense right so so I, I talk about democratization of brand because you know more than just what board apes have done so i know again they, they've been the, the yeah. poster child i suppose for centralized ip mm. but if you think about how you know ordinary brands like you know will be thinking about themselves in the future you know they need to start opening up yep. to communities they need to start being open to co-creation use of their brand assets and their brand ip in the way that Nike's doing, I suppose, with um, with Box Oh Swish. yes. Let's pause there for a second. I'm a marketer much longer than I've been a recruiter or a podcaster. So marketing is always at my heart, and I truly believe in this two point Web two point five world. So many folks and brands were so quick to go to the Web three, and they didn't stop at Web two point five. So I want to pause yeah. for a second, and you hit something. You said something that, that clicked the trigger in my head. And we're talking about brand affinity and and brand loyalty. Compared to what you've seen on the Web2 side in, in, the, in the history of, of your time in the workforce, in marketing and social media compared to now, why is there so much greater affinity in this Web3 space? Oh, yeah. You know, really great point, Adam. I actually joked with my team the other day, uh, bearing in mind in, in Web3, the focus is when you think about marketing spend and, and where you kind of you know, put your resource, it's in kind of community activation and, and often uh, you know, partnerships and the kind of things that, that your audience are, are going to be really aligned to. You know, so we, we don't spend a huge amount. And I used to work, like I say, the National Lottery. Our budgets were obscene. I spent, you know, millions of I mean, dollars sometimes. It's still so gambling, right? Happened. We're still talking to gamblers. There's a lot of gamblers in the NFT space, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so, no, so the kind of budgets we had access to at the time were just, were just amazing. So my point was I've seen greater engagement, greater reach, greater action off the back of, of messaging from, from organic piece of content that we've done 
than you know spending hundreds of thousands of dollars in uh, marketing in the traditional sense. Or even engaging in the, in the discourse when it's really a one-on-one conversation with your most loyal fans because they're owners of the IP. I think that's the difference. They own the brand. The, exactly, that. exactly that. And, uh, and it's, a, it's a sense of um, we're in it together, right? So as a brand, you think about traditional brand and audience relationship, it's I am marketing to you. It doesn't matter what you think is happening right here. I am trying to sell something to you, right. not I'm trying to create value for all of us together, right, that you can share in. Like if you own a token, if you own a, an NFT asset that allows you to have, like for example, governance rights or even potentially shared share other shared benefits that, you know, so everyone wins ultimately from, from the, uh, the growth of that, of that brand, of that product or that ecosystem. That's really where the sweet spot is. It's, it's people, you think about, you know, the next, the next generation, I hate to sound like we're, we're that old, but, but the, you know, the next generation or yeah, Gen Z and, and uh, you know, that, that sort of age, you know, they aren't thinking in, in terms of a normal consumer. They, they want to feel part yeah. of something. They're not going to settle for just being a consumer. They want to be a prosumer, right? They want to be, actively involved in there's the consumption a, there's of that an interesting dynamic that. that's funny that you're kind of talking about it's reminding me in the web 2 world i used to go to like ces and i'd go to these these conferences right and i'd i'd see all these other people that that also use apple right but at no point would i ever walk in and we'd be like oh you use apple i use apple let's be best friends oh my god right let's right? go to a party let's see but let me tell you but 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 let me tell you i go to web3 or i'll go to blockchains right and then i'll be like you use solana I use Solana. No, let's seriously be best friends. And then we'll sit there for two hours and we'll talk about everything Solana. And it'll, it'll, you know, it'll go to our family. And like it just it spans so much. But it goes back to that ownership piece, right? And us as yes. people, right? We know when things are free, when things are easy, we don't, we don't capture it as well. We don't, we don't feel yeah, the value, the the right? Game. We don't, right? Exactly. But when you're an owner, I mean, shit, think about fantasy football. It could be soccer or football, right? Yeah. No skin in the game. Works both ways. But all of a sudden, you're an owner. Now you're watching games you would never yeah. watch. You're watching people you would never watch, right? All these things are happening. So I, I just find it so interesting how we just change the ownership dynamic and our how our behaviors change in such a more communitized way. I, I just, I find it amazing. And and uh, yeah, I, I didn't really have a point with that. I was just, Preach. yeah, preaching. <laughs> I mean, you know, like Kevin, it's funny. Um, you mentioned uh, football, so I actually uh, I follow American football. I've got a, a fancy football group. But the funny thing is, right? I, I, you know, I, I'll, I'll be the first to admit it. I've, you you know, still call you guys, it football? Uh, well, so so you know, married with kids and everything, don't get a chance to follow as much as I'd oh. like to. Although I'm seeing a couple yeah. of London games, but you know, I, I'm sitting here because I, I do fancy football. Suddenly, it gives me that that kind of sense of, uh, game. of like I say. Like, but I'm, I'm engaged. I'm interested. Suddenly, I'm getting a note like, "Oh my God, Dalvin Cook's leaving the Vikings." You know, I'm like, you know, this, this stuff. <laughs> The, yeah. the, there's been there's been studies that show how much affinity fantasy sports has done for professional yep. sports. I mean, it's oh, yeah. it's it's a cla- it's a classic case study. So let's Kevin, let's take this into exactly. the metaverse. That's hundred percent. Well, so yeah, how do we how do brands bridge what we're talking about into the metaverse? Because that's what right that's that's where we can be communitized. That's where we can show up however we want to show up. That's how communitized. <laughs> right. So communitized. So, how is Ford's going to help bridge that gap between these metaverse platforms, between these brands? How are you guys working with them to do exactly what we're talking about and really, you know, help people understand what ownership means and understand how Web3 is going to be included into the metaverse? And yeah, just curious. So the metaverse, let's take, let's take it back a second. All the things we talked about, the metaverse is that is really where it all happens, right? And we talk about democratization of IP. We talk about these Web3 experiences. We talk about that sense of, of ownership and, and co-creation community. It all comes together in the metaverse. But when you, when you think about, you know, what do we mean by the metaverse, right? So I know I'm not going to get into all that. I mean, we can go down that right Well, I mean, I, well, I think it's, it is important. Actually, yeah. How would you succinctly yeah. explain the metaverse? Yeah, what's your definition? Yeah, so, so for me, I mean, obviously the Web3 metaverse is a space that is essentially can be altered, right? To the well, I say the benefit, but to, to in the sense that everybody who's immersed in that is is able to see and experience what you're experiencing. So if I if I go in there and chop a tree down, that tree remains chopped for everybody else. It, it's a it's a changeable, malleable world, right? A virtual world it doesn't have to be VR, right? It, it, that's not what it's all about. It's a space that is essentially a, a digital version of the real world uh that's to say it has to look like the real world i mean in the sense that you own things you can interact there's yep. commerce there's the ability to uh as i say to, to alter 
that landscape and to see that landscape altered permanently. There's permanence, right? So that that's where land ownership is so important because you actually own a piece of land and it is it is your property. And property rights can be replicated in, in the same way as in real life. Hey, everybody. First, I'd like to thank you all for spending time with me and my guest on the podcast. This show is my canvas to showcase amazing people from the world of recruiting, entrepreneurship, and leadership, and unpack their career journeys for everyone to learn from. But this show is also a business generator for me, as well as creating thought leadership and endless amazing content. And I've taken what I've learned in the past three years and over 200 recorded and 100 live shows and distilled it down into a digital playbook that I call the Pause Course. Now you could learn how I build, manage, and produce the podcast and use it to drive real business development and relationships. Today, I'm sharing all of my secrets behind the podcast, and you can get it all at thepausecourse.com. This course is for anyone, whether you're starting out or an advanced podcast, you're using it for B2B, a B2C. It's filled with all of my insights, learnings, tips, tricks, and templates. So get it now at thepausecourse.com and learn all my secrets. Thanks. But going back to where the metaverse is going, I see the metaverse as being like the internet is now. You will have, it's not going to be a case of like, there will be one big metaverse to rule them all. There will be different essentially metaverse experiences that you jump into just as you jump into a different yep. website, you input a URL or an address of some kind, you jump into that metaverse experience and there'll be maybe some shared syntax of the kind of avatar you use or whatever it might be, but ultimately you're, you're jumping into different experiences and those experiences could be immersive, could be you know, personalized, whatever Curious it might be. What, what, what does that look like in today's time, right? Just, you know, right now, what does that look like between Forge and Brands and in the conversations you guys are having for the audience? What is it? Yeah, that's curious. Yeah, so great, great question. So the, the reality is, you know, what Metaverse aims to be and aspires to be is still years away, right? We can all agree on that. Yeah. I think the reality is that, that you know, for Metaverse to be as I've described it, you know, it's like, you know, landscape is always altering. The amount of processing power required for that to happen in any degree. Of, oh, yeah, just of look at NVIDIA right still now. In right? We're still in Roblox. We're still in Roblox animation oh, mode. Right. So it's, it's like, yeah, exactly. It's like Sandbox, for example, obviously, you know, the most popular Metaverse platform. You know, there's a reason why graphically they, they go with that that kind of Roblox style. It's, it's It needs to be in that wave in order for it to be processed. Like we need, I mean, literally some computers required for this, they almost don't exist, like to, to get to that level of, of so, kind of um, graphics. So, I mean, what's the deal with this land grab going on in the Metaverse right now? Like why does everybody want, why does Hershey's buying, spending millions of dollars to have a plot next to Snoop Dogg, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, is it just a land grab right now, or like, or is there something we don't know about going down? Kind of like how I think the Fortune 500s were waiting for all these projects to A B test and fail before they launch out into the metaverse and into Web three. I mean, I can tell you right now. I mean, I I, um, I sit in the office with the Sandbox guys um, oh, in London. So you know, and, um, yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah. So I know, I know. Um, <laughs> and they know, but to be honest with you, they are the, the, the brands out there are that they recognize that this is the place to. And going back to your original question there, Kevin, as well, this is the space to bring your brand to life. Okay. So, again, as a marketer, imagine a situation where you, know, you have you've developed a brand, you've developed your brand values, and you want to communicate those brand values. In the real world, it's very hard to do in a way that you have complete control over. In the metaverse, Imagine a situation where if you're Coca-Cola, you talk about Coca-Cola being all about joy. Well, why not actually make it about joy? Mm-hmm. Like you're, you know, in the metaverse, you can have this amazing world where you're floating around, there's bubbles, there's party poppers, there's whatever you want to do to convey the sense of joy. That ability to bring your brand to life in whole new ways that's really reflective of your values. I think that's really exciting for brands. And that's where they're kind of jumping in with both feet, you know, because you might get that on your just a side yeah, question, exciting. if I can just step in here real fast. So I'm, I know, That's your show. I know, I know you mentioned like you know it's not necessarily AR VR, but I'm actually really curious of your thoughts of how has Apple Vision Pro changed? You know, good question. Has that inspired? <laughs> do you think is that the you know is that the iPod iPhone moment for Web three? Is that what's going to start to make this all make more sense for people as they're going to be able to immerse themselves in it and make it make sense? Yeah, and you know, it's actually a really good point, Kevin, because um, I've been asked before, you know, where do you see the first, the first sort of real mass adoption for Metaverse? And I said, um, for me, AR, not VR. Yep. That ability, you know, imagine you're walking down the street. And you talked about your example there, Kevin, of, hey, you, you know, you're in Solana, I'm in Solana. But what if there's, you can walk down the street and, and I'm a cool cat? You know, Ooh, I'm literally, I'm just, you know. Spatial computing, spatial computing, spatial computing. I think about that. <laughs> yeah, no, why not? So I can, I can just change my avatar. Just like that. And anybody that's else is wearing you know, some AR goggles, 
whatever it is, they can see me as, as I want to be seen, as, as I want to be perceived. So um, I did a... Ready, play, I mean, ready player me, I like it. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, yeah, 100%. But in the real world, so you can actually see their avatar in the real world in the sense if they were there. Some cool but imagine a situation where your entities are, are following you. Like you've got, <laughs> like you've got a Pokemon, but it's actually... You know, well, it, it, depends, you know, it depends if you have a dick butt following you or not. Like, do you really want to have a dick, like, you know, or a goblin talent, right? Like, certainly, that's right. Some of them are... Yeah, that's, that's true. Sweet. That's uh, big fact. Excuse me, excuse me, sir. You have a you have a you have a dick butt coming out of your butt. And you're like, what? What the? This? <laughs> Sorry, we digress here on the po- this is the podcast. Podcast is my show, so we digress on the podcast and let's elevate it back up with the immutable mindset, folks. <laughs> we are immutable five. Oh, man. Are five. It's, it's Friday. It's, yeah, it's Friday, Friday, guys. It's okay. It's, it's, Friday. it's Friday. It's Friday. It's We're having fun. It's okay. it's all about it. Keep it lively here. So, in terms of the unique opportunities and challenges that the metaverse is going to present for these brands and these marketers. What's that? Yeah. 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 So, so yeah. So you mentioned before about, you know, what are brands asking for? What are they saying? We had some, we've had some really, really like, you know, some of these brands, honestly, that some of the biggest brands that you would never think would want to get into the metaverse, they're looking at it. Right. And, and the reality is the challenge is how do I, create something bearing in mind all the roadblocks you have in in brands you think about the red tape i don't know if either of you worked in big companies but Amazon. my word getting getting to situation. right a- amex perfect example like you know how long do you think it's going to take for amex to start oh, getting gosh, yes. right? it's <laughs> by, by the time they go it's, through approvals and, and 30 different levels of uh senior management have to look at it and review it and question it oh and go God, through God. it right that's why these these smaller brands are move faster agile make mistakes learn adopt Pivot. That's it. That's it. And that's what you have to do. You have to, I mean, you have to fail. Honestly, in the metaverse, you have to fail first. In fact, many times before you get to a point. I mean, look at uh, look at what Gucci are doing. Not everything is gonna, gonna land perfectly, but you know, where are they now? Everyone's looking at Gucci and going, wow, why can't we be more like Gucci? Gucci. They've had a number of third activations, they're getting wrong, but uh, you know, no one cares about them in the long run. And the key is like brands need to need to realize that actually it's okay yep. to fail in web three. Failing is if you don't fail, frankly, I'm 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 suspicious of you. <laughs> it's you know, there's, you gotta there's break something shit. Wrong. You gotta break shit. You gotta break it. Yeah, absolutely. That's a solid point. Honestly, I literally never thought about that. If you've never launched anything and you come out of left field, like you're scammy to me, especially in this space. Like you're not pushing like, yeah, it. Yeah, you're not there, there's something off. And and like if you don't have a if you don't have a crypto Twitter account, like something like there there are like certain ways in which you have to present yourself almost to where it's like <laughs> Really? You've been here? Do you know, like, so yeah, it's really, you need to fail and, and not be scared. Proof. Please go ahead, Adam. Proof for proof, right? Proof for proof. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Proof. I like that. Mm, point, yeah. So one thing that I was also curious about in terms of, in terms of, you know, how Forge is, is helping adoption come about and, you know, bringing that into the metaverse. Curious about how Forge fosters that, that co-creation between fans and creators in the metaverse specifically. Yeah, well, so monkeying around is a great Perfect. example of that. Um, so, yeah. Thank so, you for, so thank monkeying you for doing around. our job with the transition. We appreciate it, Chaz. Just go with it. Probably, yeah, but you're going to be the third host here. We're just going to do three shows at once. <laughs> and then we'll chop it up and everyone can get their content. I love it. It's efficient. Work smarter, not harder. There we go, guys. Oh, God, yeah. So, um, so no, yeah, monkeying around is a perfect example. So that was the first example of the use of yeah. board apes in a metaverse experience, right? And that's something we worked with very closely with the sandbox on. I don't know if you, if you guys had a chance to, to, to oh, yeah. see the game or, or even play it. Um, we, uh, yeah, it was incredible, like really sort of expansive land. We had the swamp, we had, you know, you actually, there's a whole venture you had to go and uh, jump over crocodiles and collect, you know, kill, y- kill uh, mooses, I think, to get some food. And it was all, yeah, there's loads of stuff going on. The yep. point being, that the that, that that experience was a great example of like okay look we've got apes as forge right let's put them in a game let's show people what it's like to actually you know create your own game based on these characters like you know yuga were not affiliated with this at all it was very much just us and our apes and the community you know they had the opportunity to be a, a big part of that you know sort of helping to co-create the game obviously participating in the game there was you know the opportunity to win prizes or the rest of it and they won assets as well. So, you know, if you if you sort of participated, you got, you know, special helmets, all sorts of things. So it's, it was a really sort of community-based experience. And that was that was that's how we wanted to develop it. There was no commercial purpose. You didn't pay anything for it. It was completely free. You know, it was just for us, it was just a chance to prove that the model works, right? That was ultimately it was just one big proof of concept. I'm just curious, and maybe you didn't. This is a left field question. You know, because the, I think the big draw of this was that you got, you know, people got to use their IP, right? They got to use, you know, intellectual property in a game that's theirs. 
Did you get to hear from any any individual holders of board Ape, like any of the players? Did you get a sense of just like what the holders felt of being able to again co-create and be a part of this experience? Oh yeah, yeah. We um, so we actually uh, had quite a few of the board Apes themselves came and played, and we made a number of really really great contacts from that experience. And actually, that's funnily enough, that's what led us to the position we're in now, which is that we're obviously a, a sort of core part of the Ape community. Uh, the Ape yep. coin uh, sort of AIP proposal recently got approved. No, none of this would have happened if we hadn't sort of, kind of forged these relationships early on uh, with the Apes because of that game. So that proved that we were, you know, committed yeah. to decentralized IP and and the I suppose the the sentiment, the mission behind decentralization of IP, uh, which is something that a lot oh, of Apes, yeah. in fact, most of them, frankly, are, are super super passionate about, and rightly so. So that was that was our way of saying, us announcing that look, we're part of this. We want to we want to progress this even further. And, and now the Ape Accelerator is like the yeah, the, the final sort of uh, piece of the puzzle, I suppose. That's awesome. Interesting. I want to bring the show over to the podcast side for for a moment here, if you guys don't mind. And Chaz, our, our, the, my show, I, I get to the roots. I talk to incredible leaders like yourself. And I have a lot of people ask me, because we also have a Web3 and a Web2 recruiting practice. What would you recommend to folks who are on the Web2 side that want to break into Web3? What would be their, their best first step to try to get into a company like Forge and work with you guys? Well, what the first thing I say to people is, is actually, actually do Web3. Right. I mean, work. I've spoken to a lot of people who are like, oh, hey, you know, I, I you know, I said buzzwords don't work, guys. Jay. No buzzwords. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just, they just do not. Like the thing is, you can, you can bluff it yeah. all you want. But the minute I sit you in front of a, a community of people in Discord and they're like GM and you're like, you're frantically Googling that, you're like, no, <laughs> like, you know, you don't get it. You just don't get it. And, and you just, you need to be immersed in it. It's not like other things you can just learn yeah. on the job. If you aren't passionate about it, if you don't believe in what we're doing here, you're not going to get That's it. That's what I love about it. Even, it, even it's, it's, it's ethos and bit and the bit and the foundation because it's tech. It's technical in one sense. You need to know so many technical things because it's a completely different language. At least have a good. Even if you're not a technical person, have a good understanding of even if a difference between an L1 and an L2, or understanding what the different chains are, even what a fork is. Right, like having understanding of the crypto side, the NFT side, and then take it up to the. I mean, Kevin's wheels are spinning here because I'm the noob. He's a DJ, and I'm he's seen my pro progression into my knowledge base. And you have to talk the talk and have a good understanding of how it's fundamentally different and things that the are the reason I love right. Web three so much and what and what Chaz and Adam and you guys are talking about honestly is technology is agnostic of almost everything. Right, age. You kind of just have to prove it. You kind of just have to do the hard work, and you have to learn, and you got to fail, and you got to fuck up, and you got to figure mm -hmm. out. And then through that process, fuck around right, and find out. I've, I've like, oh, find honestly, out. I, I fucked around. Yeah, that's a theme of the I've last three months, man. Seven thousand dollars using these decentralized applications, going through DeFi well, summer twenty twenty, right? <laughs> right. Just, just. <laughs> I, I, I accidentally. That's why I explained my loss to my wife. I'm like, I was just fucking around. I was around fucking around. Out. But I accidentally yeah. sent each to the wrong to the wrong wallet, right? Like, but, but. But but I will no. but but by doing that I will never do it again because now I have a system in place, and and so right. and to your point yeah. right when I first started doing this recruiting thing that's exactly what happened I get on a call we'd have the first two minutes and then by by minute seven I'm like oh you're full of shit exactly you're yeah. you're fiercely googling what you need to say next, and so I just I just find this interesting dichotomy where it, like this space is put the work in do the work and that's how that's how you get yourself ahead. So maybe to, to our point of what we're asking and what we're talking about, you, get, you have to do the so, work. Go ahead, Adam. So Chaz, let me ask you this question. When you're, when you're interviewing somebody, what's one of those go-to questions that you ask to see how, how deep their knowledge and their passion? Because it's a combination, right? It's aptitude and knowledge and passion and attitude, right? So how do you put all that together and what questions do you ask on an interview? It's a good question. Well, funnily enough, actually, Adam, it's, it's, it's exactly the one you asked me earlier, which is what projects got you into Web3 and, and why, you know, ultimately... Uh, it's that, you know, because, it, 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 you know, I want them to have the opportunity to speak passionately about something that interested them about the space. I don't care what it is necessarily, whether it's, uh, it could be Dogecoin, you know, it could be a uh, yeah. PFP project, you know, it could be Goblin Town, I, I don't care, you know, whatever, it could be, it could be Pepe, right? But the point is that you've obviously learned something and you understand it's not about the actual token, yeah, exactly, yeah. It's not, it's not about the That's project right. itself, it's about what, be part of the community, right? Because you've obviously been part of the community 
guess it, you understand, you know, why, 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 mm. the future is so important with Web3. So if you don't understand that, I, you know, that's where you're going to fail. If you're, if you're coming with a Web2 attitude, which is, hey, I've got a product, <laughs> you've got money. Nope, nope, talk, nope, nope, nope. Uh, you know, like, here, here's, here's my advertising campaign. You're, gonna, you're not going to make it, right? You, you need to, to, to understand. You're, you're one of them, right? And, and they're one of you. You have to stop treating people like, like, your, like a your, your buyers right. or your customers. They're your, they're your, your, your stakeholders. They're your, your, their colleagues. Make humans friends. human again. Let's flip this around as we, as we start to bring it into the, the home stretch here, Chaz. What do you feel is the biggest threat to Web3 adoption and, and growth? What's, what's the biggest threat? What's, what keeps you up at night on this? Oh, Besides yeah. The kids, uh, I mean, or, the, or the U.S. Yeah, government. Yeah. <laughs> Oh shit, man! Binance, Binance. I mean, yeah, that's. I mean, we're that's we're not sorry, Chad. We're but, sorry. Um, we apologize. Uh, I, you I fucked know, it up, guys. Honestly, UK. Have you heard what we're up to? Like, we're we're actually we're taking oh, shit right. you, legal. You, honestly, you guys are. We we need to follow your lead. That's right. Just move over there. Honestly, so it's crazy, but I think the single greatest threat is is us getting wrapped up in our own bullshit. I mean, us as the industry, right? I mean, for example, as much as I love NFTs. Stop calling them NFTs, okay? You know, as much as I, I, I love cryptocurrencies, maybe let's stop referring to them as, as you know, an alternative yeah. to money, All right? Time. That's it's not, that's not what it's about. Like we, you know, but if you think about this whole thing around, you know, why people reject, and this is a marketing thing, Adam, you get this, like, why do people reject concepts? Well, if, if it's a threat to their way of living. It's a threat to their, their, their perceptions right. of the world. If you're basically turning down and going, hey, guys, do you want to co-own your favorite projects? Do you want to, piece, do you want you want to govern what these what these bastards are doing, right? You know, can you imagine a situation where you actually have control over products and services and experiences from the, your favorite brands? Get involved in Web three. You know, doesn't matter what chain. We're agnostic. We are everyone's. We're all in it together. That's another thing as well. Is stop stop getting so obsessed with your favorite oh, chain. Okay, it's not going to matter. Not going to matter in five years time. It won't be you know, mm. Solana, Cardano. ETH, whatever, like it won't matter. It will all work harmoniously and you won't even know what's happening behind Can I just say to that point, and sorry, I'm I, again, tangent again, my show, it's okay. I think, and, and Adam, Adam mentioned this earlier because Adam texted me earlier and he said, fucking Binance. And honestly, you know, as somebody that's been in this space a while, we've been waiting for this, right? I mean, within reason, we've, we've kind of known, right? We, we've known that the SEC was coming. We knew that Coinbase had its day, that Tether might have its day, that Binance... Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uncle Gary. Hey, Uncle Gary. Uncle Gary. Uncle Gary. Could you calm down? No, but seriously, you know, I, I think I think actually it's a good point. I think what Uncle Gary didn't realize is that what he did Gary. is he actually brought us together more than we could have ever, ever doing this on our own. Think yeah. how tribal we have been for the last year. Between NFT the enemy projects. And my enemy is my enemy. It's crazy. I mean, <laughs> Pepe holders hating on Doge holders and Doge holders hating on Sheep holders and Turbo and, and it's ridiculous. But all, wah, wah. but all of a sudden, wah, wah, but all of a sudden, Gary Gensler drops a couple lawsuits and all I see, well, not all I see, but 80% of the people that were, Bitcoin is the devil, ETH is the greatest, ETH is the greatest, devil. Bitcoin is the devil, are now like, you know what, guys? If we don't all come together now, this is all going to go somewhere else and somebody else is going to is going to understand ownership, is going to have the ability to own their own assets to to, you know, the peer to peer transaction. So I think they overplayed their card. And, and yeah, so just wanted to mention that. 100 percent. Kevin. And the thing is, like, kind of going back to what I was saying about this tribalism, sure. right? when you think about it, like, why are you arguing about something like TPS oh my gosh, or, yes. you know, like you know, or, or your, your, the ability to uh, I don't know to to um, you know go cross network on different chains or whatever. Why you, like these are such small things in the grand scheme of things, right? And you're looking at an existential crisis from people who do not understand our world. And you're sitting there going, "I'll explain blockchain to you," but only from the point of view of Cardano, because hey, you could do liquid staking, and it doesn't even do who you know cares. Why, like this is focus. It's essential. Yeah, no, sorry, no, no. Kevin, Kevin we're all fantasy football <laughs> owners now, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, well, we've I, all got time. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean, like I'm going off on a, I, like, I mean, I was trying to try an analogy with live in, in the PGA, but I, I couldn't, I couldn't, I, I couldn't get to that point. But we're seeing things happen that we've never seen happen before, faster than ever. That's kind of where I was going. That we're waking up and we're seeing shit happen. Everything from political, and I mean, Kevin could go off on on a diatribe about <laughs> politics, microeconomics with this, but we are getting close well, to to the end so, here. And I want to, I want to talk about. Four, well, sorry, no, 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 Kev, to, to, to that go, point right there, and I think it ties in right. So exactly what we're tying into, right? Do you think Web3 is, is, you know, 
the precipice? Is it the reason that we're seeing all these changes? Is it, you know, is it the reason we're seeing a lot of this instability in certain places? Is it that because finance is changing because now, you know, I mean, that goes to, to Adam's point, right? That goes to macro, that goes to like the petrodollar. Saudi Arabia is now involved. Is there like a blockchain reason for a lot of these things, do you think? I see it as the the, the cure there you go. Uh, rather than necessarily instigator, right? So I think the reason it's becoming more and more popular is because, you know, things are changing fast. And I think what we're seeing instead is the this explosion of yes. access to information, access to the internet, the ability to question things. Mm -hmm. You think about like this sense of like, what is truth anymore, right? No one knows. No one knows what truth is anymore. I, I, I don't, I mean, read the news. I'm sitting there going, I honestly don't know. It doesn't matter what source you read it in. I do not know if this yeah. is true. That's a solid How point. How crazy is it in our lifetime that that is an actual and it's problem? It's so easy to fake so, all this shit. It's so easy. It's so easy to fake all this shit. Exactly. Mm. You know, Trump's excitement, whatever. Like, you know, personally, like, you know, politics, it uh, doesn't matter whether you like or hate yeah. Trump. Like, it is just impossible to understand what is real and what is not. And if you're a Trump supporter or not, you know, you're sitting there going, I, you know, if he goes to jail, is that for the right reasons? The wrong yeah. reasons? I don't know. Like, I, I, the, the problem is, you know, without blockchain, how does this Agreed. get solved? Without the ability to say, with, you know, there is an immutable source yep. of truth, right? That was, that was essentially put that onto the blockchain. You know, exactly, exactly that. So, you know, it was, it was validated as a legitimate source. That's At the this root time, of it. it's the root of it, exactly. So, so you know, without that, how are we ever going to be able to just get out this mess, I love that. right? I love that. Um, so, you know, it's, it's absolutely necessary. Yeah, Web three is a is a cultural yes. movement, you know, as far as I'm concerned. But blockchain is a technological movement, right? And that's where that's where I really think that we're going to see some major, major changes. So, speak, speaking of major changes, I love if you could drop us a little bit of alpha here. The show is going to come out in a couple of weeks. What are, you, what are you guys working on? What could you share with us? Some exciting innovations, even if you can't share all the secrets. Maybe just a little nod towards what's going on to to give our audience that that alpha that we're uh, of course, yearning of course, for. Yeah. You know what? We are we are very fortunate at Forge. We've got so much going on. Uh, it's just honestly, it's incredible. But what can we talk about? Okay, so I don't know if you guys have heard about the other side. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, good better. deal. We've got some stuff coming. We're we're working closely with those guys, and uh, we've got we've got a cool new project coming out very very soon, and that's going to be that's going to be super super. So keep your eyes open okay. for that. Obviously, we've got our um, eight coin accelerator, uh, which is a uh, incubator and launch pad for the egg coin DAO. So obviously anybody who has any egg coin, watch out. We've got some amazing things coming down the line on that as well. So I should hold my uh, and they just hired my, one of my really good friends on the DAO. So I co-signed this. Oh, wow. Excellent. Which, uh, which one? Oh, that's a red guy. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So no, it's loads of stuff happening there. That is That, that project is, is so cool. We're, we're so honored to be part wow. of that. So that brand's coming out. In fact, I'm working, I've been working today on, on the brand logo and design for that. So that's going to be really, really cool. That's coming out uh, later in, in Q3. So yeah, that's going to be massive. And apart from that, we also have uh, you know a, another big game coming out uh, Ooh, in partnership like with uh, Pixels. So Pixels, uh, yeah, massive Web3 game uh, based on Polygon. So that's coming out as well. So uh, we're really looking forward to that. It's going to be super exciting. I love that. You know, honestly, um, it's not about the next billion. It's like, again, next one, next two, next three, gaming. Do you know Bryson? I know we're almost at the end of the show. Do you know Bryson? Throw names at him. A gamer here in base, Miami base, Bryson. He, he does Twitter handle gaming? Bryson. No, not no, 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 no. Hey, he's doing a lot of content. I'm seeing gaming is the next in the forefront. Glad you guys are bringing gaming to the next. It's, it's the next thing. It's 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 what I feel people are going to be excited about. So it's, it's what I'm going. Kev. All right, all right. So as mentioned, we're almost at the end of a show. But before we wrap up, I did want to give our audience a takeaway, a little bit of some of our awesome discussion with Charles. So. Just to kind of recap a little bit, today's podcast, we painted a vivid picture of the metaverse. We talked about its potential and how innovators like the aforementioned Charles Stanton and companies like Forge are shaping its evolution. You know, really what we want, y'all, we want y'all to stay curious, stay open, be willing to embrace these new digital frontiers. These, man, I, did, you, did you guys just hear this conversation? Did you hear all that alpha that Carl's was dropping? New opportunities are coming, guys. We're moving to an interconnected world. That's it for today, y'all. Don't forget to stay tuned to our next episode. We'll continue to explore the intersection of technology, creativity, and innovation that intersects us as human beings. Thank you so much, Charles. Please, before we go, let them know where to find you on socials. 
Yeah, of course. So you can follow me on uh, at Chaz underscore Stanton. And of course, uh, follow Forge on at Forge Official uh, for all the alpha and all of our, our various different brands and projects. Awesome. Thanks so much for coming on. We appreciate you. No worries. Thanks, yeah. guys. Great yeah, everybody at home, take care. Have a wonderful day. Stay curious, my friends. And thank you for joining the podcast at thepodcast.com. Be good to yourself and be better to others. Take care, everybody. Wisdom is forever, but for us, it's time to go. Thank you for joining us. Luckily, we'll be back with our next episode soon, jam-packed with more incredible humans. Thank you for listening, subscribing, and sharing. To join the conversation, search The Pausecast on LinkedIn. And to catch up on past episodes and more info, please visit www.thepausecast.com. <laughs>